Senior Hezbollah commanders were target of Beirut headquarters strike, Israeli official says. The Israeli military struck Hezbollah's headquarters in Beirut on Friday in a series of massive explosions that targeted the leaders of the militant group and leveled multiple high-rise apartment buildings in the biggest blasts to hit the Lebanese capital in the past year. At least six people were killed and 91 were wounded, Lebanon's health ministry said. Hezbollah's senior commanders were the target of the strikes on the group's headquarters, according to a senior Israeli official, who told reporters Friday that it was too early to confirm if the group's leader, Hassan Nasrallah, had been killed. The Israeli army declined comment. It was not immediately clear if Nasrallah was at the site, and Hezbollah did not comment on the report. The death toll from the strikes is likely to rise significantly as teams are still combing through the rubble of six buildings. The senior Israeli official said the military sought to minimize civilian casualties by striking in the daytime, when many people wouldn't be home. He added Israel was not seeking a broader regional war, but said Hezbollah's military capabilities had been meaningfully degraded by the recent series of Israeli military operations and that the Beirut strike, if successful, would leave Hezbollah with a significant leadership gap. In a possible further sign of the strike's significance, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu abruptly cut short a visit to the United States and was returning home instead of waiting until the end of Sabbath on Saturday evening, his office said. Israeli politicians do not normally travel on the Sabbath except for matters of great import. Hours earlier, Netanyahu addressed the UN, vowing that Israel's campaign against Hezbollah would continue, further dimming hopes for an internationally backed ceasefire. Several delegates stood up and walked out before he gave his address. To a degree unseen in past conflicts, Israel this past week has aimed to eliminate Hezbollah's senior leadership. Israeli Army spokesman Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari said the strikes targeted the main Hezbollah headquarters, located beneath residential buildings. Defense Minister Yov Gallant's office said he was huddling with the head of Israel's Air Force and other top commanders at military headquarters, following updates. In a videotaped statement released later, Hagari said Israeli forces are preparing to conduct strikes on strategic assets that Hezbollah has hidden underground beneath three buildings in the heart of the Dahi in Beirut. He identified the buildings where Israel claims Hezbollah has been storing missiles and said residents have been contacted and warned to evacuate immediately. The earlier series of gigantic blasts at around nightfall reduced six buildings to rubble in the Harat Reich neighborhood of Beirut's Dahia suburbs, according to Lebanon's national news agency. The shockwave rattled windows and shook houses some 30 kilometers, 18 miles, north of Beirut. TV footage showed several craters, one with a car toppled into it amid collapsed buildings in the densely populated, predominantly Shiite neighborhood. First responders were still searching under the rubble hours later as others struggled to put out fires. The full scope of casualties was not immediately clear, the health ministry said, adding that 15 of the 76 wounded had been hospitalized. Many people who live in the vicinity were seen gathering belongings and fleeing along a main road out of the district. Nasrallah has been in hiding for years, very rarely appearing in public. He regularly gives speeches, but always by video from unknown locations. The site hit Friday evening had not been publicly known as Hezbollah's main headquarters, though it is located in the group's security quarters, a heavily guarded part of Harat Reich where it has offices and runs several nearby hospitals. The Pentagon said the U.S. had no advance warning of the strikes. The White House said President Biden was briefed by his national security team several times on Friday and has directed the Pentagon to assess and adjust as necessary U.S. force posture in the region to enhance deterrence, ensure force protection, and support the full range of U.S. objectives. He has also directed his team to ensure that U.S. embassies in the region take all protective measures as appropriate. The events of the past week and the past few hours underscore what a precarious moment this is for the Middle East and for the world, Secretary of State Antony Blinken said at a news conference Friday in New York. Israel has the right to defend itself against terrorism. The way it does so matters. The choices that all parties make in the coming days will determine which path this region is on, with profound consequences for its people now and possibly for years to come. Israel dramatically intensified its airstrikes in Lebanon this week, saying it is determined to put an end to more than 11 months of Hezbollah fire into its territory. The scope of Israel's operation remains unclear, but officials have said a ground invasion to push the militant group away from the border is a possibility. Israel has moved thousands of troops toward the border in preparation.
Israel's strikes this week have killed more than 720 people in Lebanon, including dozens of women and children, according to health ministry statistics. A pre-dawn strike Friday in the mainly Sunni border town of Chebai hit a home, killing nine members of the same family, the state news agency said. A resident identified the dead as Hussein Zara, his wife Radaba, their five children and two of their grandchildren. At the UN, Netanyahu vowed to continue degrading Hezbollah until Israel achieves its goals. His comments dampened hopes for a U.S.-backed call for a 21-day truce between Israel and Hezbollah to allow time for a diplomatic solution. Hezbollah has not responded to the proposal. Iranian-backed Hezbollah, the strongest armed force in Lebanon, began firing rockets into Israel almost immediately after Hamas' October 7 attack, saying it was a show of support for the Palestinians. Since then, it and the Israeli military have traded fire almost daily, forcing tens of thousands of people to flee their homes on both sides of the border. An Israeli security official said he expects a possible war against Hezbollah would not last for as long as the current war in Gaza, because the Israeli military's goals are much narrower. In Gaza, Israel aims to dismantle Hamas' military and political regime, but the goal in Lebanon is to push Hezbollah away from the border with Israel, not a high bar like Gaza, in terms of operational objectives, said the official, who spoke on the condition of anonymity due to military briefing guidelines. The Israeli military said it carried out dozens of strikes around the South Friday, targeting Hezbollah rocket launchers and infrastructure. It said Hezbollah fired a volley of rockets toward the northern Israeli city of Tiberias. In the southern Lebanese city of Tyre, civil defense workers pulled the bodies of two women 35-year-old Hiba Ataya and her mother Sabah Olian from the rubble of a building brought down by a strike. That's Sabah, these are her clothes, my love, one man cried out as her body emerged, Israel says its accelerated strikes this week have already inflicted heavy damage on Hezbollah's weapons capabilities and its fighters. But the group boasted a large arsenal of rockets and missiles and its remaining capacities remain unknown. Hezbollah officials and their supporters remain defiant. Not long before the explosions Friday evening, thousands were massed in another part of Beirut's suburbs for the funeral of three Hezbollah members killed in earlier strikes, including the head of the group's drone unit, Mohammed Sarar. Men and women in the giant crowd waved their fists in the air and chanted, We will never accept humiliation as they marched behind the three coffins, wrapped in the group's yellow flag. Hussein Fadlala, Hezbollah's top official in Beirut, said in a speech that no matter how many commanders Israel kills, the group has endless numbers of experienced fighters who are deployed all over the front lines. Fadlala vowed that Hezbollah will keep fighting until Israel stops its offensive in Gaza. We will not abandon the support of Palestine, Jerusalem and oppressed Gaza, Fadlala said. There is no place for neutrality in this battle.